Germany is one of the biggest manufacturers of the world's fountain pens. More importantly, however, is that Germany is still a country that still views the fountain pen as a helpful and effective writing tool. And their pens reflect that. And while, yeah, German design and engineering has some generalizations that you could probably apply across the board, fountain pens made in Germany do have a ton of variety. And I've selected five that I personally feel that you should definitely try if you ever get the chance. Now, I'm not telling you you need to buy any of these. I just want to explain why it'd be cool if you got one of these in your hand at some point, one way or another. I will link all of these pens in the description below though, just in case you happen to be in the shopping mood. I'll choose the store at randomly though. Definitely won't be the Goulet Pen Company. Here, has a, there's a wheel right here. Can I, can we spin a wheel? No, I don't know, can we do that? I don't know. We'll see. Okay, I'm gonna get this one out of the way first. Yes, it's the Lamy 2000. Lamy is a titan of the fountain pen industry, producing an incredible amount of fountain pens directly out of their factory in Heidelberg, where they crank out industry staples like the Safari. But what I want you to try is, of course, the incomparable Lamy 2000. Now, I'm not going to spend too much time telling you about this pen. You can click here to learn why Brian Goulet inducted it into our Hall of Fame. But as far as why I want you to try it, for one, it actually feels unlike any other pen on the market. It's uh, matte polycarbonate is warm, it's comfortable, and it's durable. Uh, apart from the material though, its shape is unique in that you can position your grip just about anywhere you'd like if you wanna be far away from the page or you can really choke up on it and get super close to the tiny, tiny nib. Since the 2000 here has a snap cap, there are no threads to get in the way of your grip. And the tiny little 14 karat gold nib is semi hooded, so you can get really low. I also want you to try filling this pen because it fills from this tiny little hole right up near the front, which is super handy to access even the most shallow of vessels. And finally, I want you to cap this thing. So not only does the cap perform its duty well, keeping air away from your nib, it just feels fantastic. This satisfying pop that you get is from these inconspicuous little tabs on the side that make sure the cap stays put. There are plenty of reasons why this pen has been virtually unchanged for over 50 years. Try one, see for yourself. While not as well known as Lamy, Diplomat is a brand that has definitely been on the rise over the last several years, making a couple of really fun fountain pens that you should consider trying. The one I want to tell you about today though is the Diplomat Magnum. The Magnum is a very affordable pen at around $26. At first glance, it's, you know, it might feel a little less substantial than you might prefer. It's super lightweight at 14 grams and maybe like that, I don't know. Uh, the reason I want you to try the Diplomat Magnum is because of the nib. Now, from what I understand, Diplomat uses nibs made by Yovo, also in Germany, on all of their pens. All of their nibs have that familiar Yovo look and feel, which is great. The Magnum though, there's something funky going on with this nib. Funky in a good way. This little nib is unlike any nib I've ever seen because at a glance, it looks like a standard German number five nib. But when you write with it, it does not write with the rigidity of a small steel German nib. Though it is indeed a small steel German nib, it has a shockingly bouncy, soft feel to it. Now, I don't know why Yovo doesn't make this nib for anything else other than the Magnum, but as it is, this is definitely the Magnum's superpower. It moves surprisingly well with your pressure, allowing you to use a heavier hand in some places, if you wish. Definitely not something you'd expect from this pen and something I really do think you should try at some point. Apart from the Lamy 2000 and the Mont Blanc 149, there's one more pen that sits up at the top of the three most iconic German pens, in my opinion, and that is Pelican's M1000. Now, this pen couldn't be more different than the Diplomat Magnum. The M1000 is bigger, it's heavier, 
and some might say it's a little bit less affordable. Pelican has a few pens in the Souverain family, the M200, the M400, the M600, the M800, each larger than the last. And needless to say, the M1000 is up at the top. Again, I'm not trying to sell you on this pen. It's expensive, and I don't even know if I would buy one if I had the money. That's, that's a hard decision. Maybe I would. Maybe I would. Anyway, uh, here's the thing, though. Holding one of these and having the opportunity to write with one is an unforgettable experience. The presence that this pen carries with it is something that can only be conveyed in hand. The structure of the pen and the quality of it all is overshadowed only by this glorious nib. And I've spoken to many people who consider this nib to be the best in the business. And while, yeah, it's every bit as reliable on the page as Pelican's M600 or M800 pens, this massive gold nib here can only be found on the M1000. And writing with it is a delight. This pen's weight is all you need to create a smooth, consistent stroke. And if you do happen to be fortunate enough to ever write with one of these, it's likely that your reaction will be like mine, where you say, okay, okay, I, I get it. And I could probably say a lot of these same things about the Mont Blanc 149, being honest, but we are actually able to sell the M1000. So that's where my you know personal experience is more complete. We're going back to Diplomat again for this next one, because it's not often a pen comes along in the modern industry that brings with it a completely new shape, but the Diplomat Arrow certainly does that. Immediately, the sight of this pen sparks curiosity, but why would you actually want to try it? Well, for starters, every one of you should know how this thing feels when you cap it. You might've heard me talk about this before, but it's one of the most, if not the most satisfying things in the whole pen world. It has a snap you can hear, yeah, but the feel of the smooth tension that leads up to the snap, that's something you need to do in person. And that's all superficial though, not the main reason I want you to try this. The main reason I want you to try this pen is because a lot of people see a metal pen that's on the larger side and they think it's going to be heavy and uncomfortable. The arrow is usually aluminum, not always, this one is. It's not as heavy as it looks. Yeah, the grip section is metal, but it's not a slick metal. It actually feels pretty great. Diplomat makes some beautifully engineered pens, and this is one of their most, if not their most popular model. And it makes it clear that they care about what they make and how they make it. It's what Germany does best. Imaginative, yet simple design blended with precise execution and uh, reliability. So I promise you that it's at least worth a try. Mm. Kaweco is one of Germany's most globally recognized brands, not because of any sort of luxurious, you know, high-end marketing, but by spending decades getting affordable, fun, and practical fountain pens into the hands of, I don't know, a whole, whole bunch of bunch of people. The Kaweco Sport is mainly what I'm referring to here in terms of proliferation, but I'm not going to tell you that you simply have to try it. You'll know if that one hits your bullseye. No, the Kaweco that I want you to try is the Supra. One of the best reasons to try a Supra is also the reason you don't need to try it. Hang on. Okay, so the Supra comes fully assembled, like you see here, as a full-size fountain pen with a full-size number six steel nib. But if you remove this center section here and you reassemble it, it is very much cartridge. It is very much a pocket pen now, but with a larger number six nib. So yes, I want you to play around with this. It's fun. However, you could also just buy it and simply figure out which version you like the best. Its special ability makes it great for writers who might sometimes want to switch between a larger or a smaller pen or writers that simply don't know what they prefer yet. Uh, another reason I want you to get your hands on this one is because they're available in steel, brass, and aluminum, and they all feel totally different in your hand. They all have different weights. I had used brass and steel before, and I wasn't super into them, and then I held the aluminum, and I was instantly into it. So yeah, worth getting your hands on, both for the cool transformer vibes and for the uh, tactile exploration. 
So that's it. Not only are these all great pens that represent some solid German fountain pen passion, but in my opinion, they provide you with a special in-hand experience if you get the opportunity to grab one. Links are down below if you'd like to learn more. Thanks for choosing to spend a little bit of time with me today. Have fun and ride on.